folkies. Today I have a bit of a secret for you. A nickel harpa secret. Which will make your playing cleaner, smoother and more comfortable for you. It's a technique that you might already have used for some time or that you have never even thought about. But in any case, let's talk about crossed fingering. to talk about is the crossed fingerings technique or crossed fingers. I don't know if it is its official name, it's just the name that I use, maybe it has another official name. I just find that crossed fingers is a good description of what is happening because it really feels like you're crossing your fingers. You are not actually doing it but it really feels like it. This technique is mostly for nickel harpa. To some extent you can use it on fiddle and cello and very probably on guitar. I'm sure it's a very well-known technique on guitar, um, but on nickel harpa it's not exactly like obvious at first, at least it was not to me, and on fiddle and cello and this family not really either, but I'm pretty sure you can use it to some extent. There might be other instruments that can use something similar. Also yes, for the fiddle people in the chat telling me that oh this is half position, Yes, it is very close to the half position on fiddle, cello and all this family. But it's a little bit more specific for nickel harpa. You will encounter the crossed fingering technique mostly in melodies. Which melodies? Well, it depends on the melody, but also on how you are tuned on your instrument. I am tuned in fifths, but many nickel harpas are tuned with this one being a C instead of a D. So it depends a lot on that, how you are tuned. But in some melodies you will basically have a fifth that you would on, for example, fiddle, normally play using a bar chord technique. Like, like on guitar, you just put your finger on two strings. So here I have a melody that starts on an E and goes to a B. And we could play it just like with this bar chord technique from guitar. However, it might not always work. Sometimes the nickel harpa keyboard is just not designed in a way that this technique is even possible. The distances of different keyboards are just different, they are different proportions and everything. Sometimes it's just never gonna sound but this kind of thing and that's not nice. But sometimes even if it works for your keyboard to do that, it will just not sound very not sound very good maybe you will have a little bit of this unclear sound or it will just be very uncomfortable for your hand because you need to have your index finger in this case very like rigid in one direction and then the rest of the fingers round and smooth in the other other direction kind of so it's might be a little bit weird i have this little melody here <laughs> with a bar chord but it's a little bit uncomfortable. What could I do otherwise? I could jump, right? I could use my first finger, index finger on the E and then jump to the B. Problem, it is very hard to make that sound nice because you need to jump very quickly and you have all the distance of your finger to, to cover plus the distance of each key reaching the string. So in one way, release, and the other way, press. Which is quite some distance actually, if the tune is fast. So you might end up having this kind of... Some kind of open strings in the middle there. Or even if you don't, you might have a very hard clicking sound. This one. Because you are pressing very fast, aka harder than usual. And although clicking is a normal part of nickel harpa sound. If it's very hard, it might be a little bit dis like disturbing in your playing. And then also it's stressful for you because you need to jump very fast. Ah, not the best. So what we could do as a solution to both the bar technique and the jumping not being really good 
is to use something that feels kind of not allowed. Let's use our second finger, middle finger, I'm sorry, it's gonna be this one, <laughs> instead of the first finger, the index finger. So the E I will play with my first finger, normal, but the B I'll play with my second finger. Yes, I painted my nails in kind of silly colors to help you see which finger is which. So we will do... And then we can replace the second finger with the first one, just as per usual, first position, all normal. And go on. situation in which you might need this technique and actually it's the situation in which it shines the most is for chords. So nickel harpa is great for playing chords because you can see all your notes already and it's always in tune. So it's a really good instrument for chords. <laughs> Supernatural, haha. <laughs> but crossing your fingers, so using these crossed finger techniques, is really gonna help you because there are so many cases in which you will have a fifth or some kind of weird position of your fingers where you kind of need to cross them in some way. So for example, just very simply, if you are on the G and D string and you want to do just the A and E chord, if you try to put your uh, fingers as a bar chord as usual it's hard to get clean and it might get complicated if you need the two other notes the two open strings to have a clean sound because the rows of the nickel harpa might just not be very well designed for just that so instead of doing a bar chord again just use the cross finger technique and do a very good fifth with crossed fingers with index on A and second finger or middle finger on E and very good there it is a few exercises to practice um, this technique for chords we will simply play a little scale on the D string super simple and then we will add an A drone with the first finger we keep this one and we go just to get used to the feeling of those fingers crossing kind of just practice this kind of pattern like a little bit and if you feel that it's a bit pulling in your fingers because they are not used to that then take a break and stretch them a little bit it might get very tense very fast in the beginning next step of the exercise we're gonna do the same but to train changing chords we will release the first finger to get the G instead of the A when we play a G here so we have the octave like this changing chords a little bit. Then let's do the same but instead of the first finger on an A we will use the second finger on the B. Same little scale. And again we will release for the G. changes until you have a full bass line, a full chord line um, with fingers switching and crossing in weird directions all the way. Tip, take some tune that you really like, that you often play in sessions 
and find the chords on your nickel harpa and then find how you can put your fingers to do each chord and then how to switch from one chord to the next because it's really because of those switching moments that we sometimes need to have something with crossed fingers because suddenly I need to use my third finger for something else and you know this kind of things happening and I think it's also a very nice thing to sit with your nickel harpa and explore chords and just feel how they feel and what are the possibilities for making them for playing them because you can use maybe a fourth finger instead of the third and a first finger instead of the second and you know all these kind of little possibilities that you have that guitar players know very very well the third situation in which you might use the crossed fingerings is when you want to upgrade your playing a little bit and instead of just playing the melody you want to play some drone with your melody and in many cases you can have a drone that is an open string it works very well but sometimes you will want to have another note than one of your open strings as your drone. For example, back to our little melody from the start, this would do very well with the E as a drone. In that case, we will simply give the task of playing the drone to the first finger, poof, on the E, keep it there, and then the other fingers will have to fill in for the index finger not being there. And this tune is a very good one actually because I'm using only three fingers on the A string anyway, so I don't need to change my hand like this. But it really depends on the melody. Let me just show you how it works with the drone. So I'm keeping this one all the way. It's a very nice, like, added effect. And there you really need the cross fingerings because you cannot do it with the open string. It's just not, a, not as nice. I mean, you could, but I prefer the E personally. Here it is quite an easy situation because I just use the first finger on a key that is anyways played by the first finger in principle and then I just switch the rest of the hand down as if I was in a half position on the violin or cello but sometimes you will have different drones for example what if I had well I don't know an F sharp as a drone <laughs> possible but then it's the second finger middle finger that will keep the F sharp or what if I have a G this time it's the third finger keeping the drone and the other fingers are filling in and which finger is the good one for keeping the drone really depends on your anatomy and what feels comfortable for you for me it's almost always crossing in this direction but it might be crossing in the other direction for you that feels the most natural and comfortable as for the chords it's really about taking time and figuring out what works and practicing it sometimes you will even have some tunes where you need to change which finger is responsible for the drone because you need to reach somewhere for example first i will have my fourth finger as a drone because i'm playing here but then i want to go play here so i need to change which finger is holding the drone this is a bit more advanced and it's kind of hard, but it's just to illustrate how far you can take this drone technique and the cross fingering. It can get really advanced. As a little exercise, you can take a very simple tune that has very few notes and that is very slow and try to play it with different drones. I will take Herr Olof, for example, with... So I play it on the D string and I will have first just the open G as a drone. on the A okay now let's do it with a I don't know a B here I use a 
second finger, but actually it was a bit uncomfortable because I needed to cross. So maybe I actually need to use the third finger for the B. But what if I use a C as a drone? <laughs> because here I need to cross the third and fourth fingers. Okay, and last, we'll take the D with the fourth. This exercise is also a good way to explore different drones with a melody, to hear how different it can sound with just changing that drone. Ah, oh, maybe it sounds more open, more dramatic, more romantic, more cliché or just very, very weird. Okay, that's about this crossed finger technique or cross fingerings. I would be really interested to know if you have, well, another name for it, like a more official name maybe, or if you play another instrument, what techniques do you have on that instrument that feel similar to this one? Basically, when does it feel kind of half not allowed and half cheating to do something but it's actually a very common technique and you need it to be able to play some stuff. I'm thinking about wind instruments changing registers like clarinets. I know it's kind of a delicate thing and maybe you have like some clef or something that is just a little bit of a trick but works and is necessary for playing smoothly and for having yeah a good sound and something comfortable. Let me know if you have anything like this on other instruments. Oh yeah, before I forget, one of the questions you might have is how do I know which cross fingering to use and when to use it? And to that my answer is it depends. <laughs> Nickel harpa is an instrument that you need to take some time with alone to practice things in order for them to be smooth. Especially when there is a bit of climbing in the keyboard or this kind of weird fingering techniques that you need to, you know, figure out, finger out, haha, almost, almost a wordplay. Um, you need to take time to find these, to have something that is smooth. Even the most advanced musicians, they need to take this time. I mean, I know for myself, if I play in D or in G, which are the keys that I play the most in, I can climb and pretty much like wing it on the spot. But if it's anything else, usually I will need to sit for a few hours, not in a row, but like a few hours here and there, little bits, to find something that works, to find a smooth, like, pattern of fingers, yeah, fingering pattern that works, that is smooth, that sounds good, and that I can remember. I really encourage you to do that, to not just play for the lesson or just play for the session, but to take these nerdy moments with yourself, to just sit with your Nikarpa and, you know, find the best and smoothest way to do the thing find the good chords, which drone sounds good, which, which melody, and so on. It's just, it's the nerdy little moments that are so, so good. I won't talk more. Um, before I go, I will just remind you to please, if you have not subscribed yet, to do so, to leave a comment telling me about your journey with your instrument, your weird techniques, your other instruments. And... If you find these videos that I make useful, there are lots of them on the channel, go check about Scandinavian folk music, nickel harpa, fiddle, and so on. Well, consider supporting me on Patreon. There is a link in the description. And a big thank you to my patrons for their support, by the way. I will stop talking now and I will go cross my fingers in weird ways. See you! Hey, dog. <laughs>